I got the the number of episodes uh, wrong on the last uh, go round. You're forgiven though. I think we're on this, five, six. No, this is episode six. six this is episode, episode six. six. Episode yeah. six. It's amazing. We're, we're still we're, on. Still going. We should. I mean, first seasons of things are always short. You know. Right. Like, first seasons, it's rare you have, like... Well, 24, I guess, is different. There were 24 Four, episodes. Yes. The first season, season of 24. Yeah. That was always weird. I'm like, why not? Are there 24 that? episodes in every season of 24? I think so, unless it's, like, one of those series where, like, nope. Well, during the writer's strike. That yeah. happened a long time ago, kids. Yeah. So, but, yeah, but that's the only one. And 24 was the show as well. But, yeah, I mean, some first seasons, it's only, like, five, five six episodes. Yeah. It's like, they cut it. It's like, oh, I hope it comes back. So it gives you this, you know, and yearning for it. And then it gets canceled. It. Yeah, and then it gets canceled. So you're like... Ah, uh, thanks a lot, oh. NBC. But they're not sponsoring this. No. I don't think they'll pick it up either. I don't think Probably it'll not. be picked up by Probably a uh, gigantic um, uh, national corporation. Nah, you never know. You never know. We do appeal. We have a we have some audience. Some audience. Few y'all. People. Y'all are the audience. audience. So y'all are the audience, and maybe you never know. Our wives. You never know. Your children. <laughs> That's a sets a swing at the fence to assume my wife watches this. Goodman. Listens. Goodman's watching. Goodman hopefully does. I mean, he's the content guy. Hopefully he watches it. Yeah. You know, to see what we're talking about. I think Kristen Sanchez, the events executive, watches it. She watches it. So basically, hire things. To, we're yeah, yeah, our things. staff watches it. There we go. Staff Hi, watches. guys. It's a requirement. You want to get paid this year? You watch this podcast. I really don't want to. He just sits there and he makes comments. He doesn't make sense. It's entertaining, but I learned nothing. <laughs> I don't want to watch it anymore. You can't make me. Well, let's... let's. Uh, that's too fun. Now we can talk about something serious. I'm sorry. I got a little dramatic thing. No, no, no. That was good. I like that. That was it's, a good rendition. That, that's the thing. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, that was my Erica Jacoby. You know, it was... It was, um, I'm about, I don't know if she was about at her height right now, sitting down. So I guess not right there. No, I better not say anything. She's nice to me. She has those little fists that get mad at you. But so what we talked, I think we talked about Christology. We've teased out Christology in the movies for a few weeks now. So I figured we would, uh, we kind of, uh, dive a little bit into that. Dive into it. So Christology in movies, I mean, this is the neat part about it. We can talk about, you can do any movie with it because... Unless you're watching something um, that came out of like the Baptist broadcasting system or something, you know, it's not intentionally. Hey, I'm gonna write a movie That's or BBS instead of BBC. Yes, BBS, a Bible right. broadcasting uh, system. Um, <laughs> very confusing. One is crumpets and tea. The other one, well, it's basically tea and crumpets too. Um, they're tea total lures as well. But the thing is. Um, so unless it's that, you're gonna, it's not going to be like this movie was written with the intention of teaching you about Jesus. Mm-hmm. You're going to see it trickling down. And one I thought of talking about first, and it'll probably come up as we go, is actually where we get the title there and back again is Lord of the Rings. Yep. Now that's from Hobbit, though. Mm-hmm. Hobbit, but basically saying Tolkien. But it's interesting, when Tolkien wrote the books, he didn't write them saying, I'm going to write a fictional book about Jesus. Right. And everybody will get it. No. He he wrote he wanted he wanted England to have its own mythology its own fairy tale and he got that with mm-hmm. Hobbit Lord of the Rings, but Tolkien was a very devout Roman Catholic, like so old school he would still do the chants back in Latin mm-hmm. when they spoke in English you know old school Roman Catholic, and he's saturated with it. I mean he was one of the guys that helped convert Lewis. I mean he's he's just he 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 is literally soaking with. The Word of God, and when you squeeze them out, it's it, it it's gonna come out in what he writes. So I guess you could say that almost about any film, it's not like you watch something thinking, okay, I'm gonna I'm watching this so I can learn about Jesus. It's well, not why you watch it, but it can be a little plus in watching it. Well, I think we we kind of touched on it uh, a couple of weeks ago. Is everything every hero story, Superman is always going to have the Christ-like figure. And right. any, I mean, any superhero movie you watch nowadays, which is, by and large, the majority of, right. of media is going to have the Christ-like superhero figure. Right. Um, and even dramas, et cetera, are going to have some sort of sacrifice. Yeah. What have you that kind of always point back to that. But I, I like the idea of, of uh, focusing on Lord of the Rings as... Um, it's a little deeper than that, I think. Yeah. It's just not the, the sacrificial Christ-like figure, is it, though? No. I mean, you have, you have in Lord of the Rings, and this is, um, you know, me geeking out a little bit. You have Jesus is a prophet, priest, and king. We've, all, we've heard these things. And with three of the main characters in Lord of the Rings, you see 
these different Jesuses. You see prophet in the, the image of Gandalf. Gandalf is, you know, the wizard Gandalf. And um, Allison doesn't like when I do Gandalf at home. You know, I come in and talk like Gandalf. She doesn't like it. Um, so it's basically just Ian McKellen I'm imitating. I'm not really imitating Gandalf, but him instead. But you have, like, him finding the Balrog and dying, coming back to life. This is the prophecy of who the Messiah mm -hmm. is. He, he fills that out. <clears throat> so you see aspects of that Christology that Tolkien had and he knew. And as he's writing, he has that figure that's like this of old prophetic that's now being carried out. Mm -hmm. And then you have the king figure in Aragorn. 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 Oh, goodness gracious. I said it wrong. Aragorn. That's the dragon that goes rawr in the book. You know, that's a different thing. Aragorn. That's, he is the one that is the, the return of the king. You really see that in that volume. And it's this king that comes and brings peace. And that's what Jesus does. He's the king of peace that reigns from the throne of the cross. And then you have priest and Frodo bearing the ring mm -hmm. to destroy it. What does Christ do? He is our sin bearer. So if you were to take any of those three, which one has maybe most the most Christ-like? I've always heard a lot of people really focusing on Gandalf a lot as that Christ-like figure. But I go more for the, the Frodo one. Yeah, that, yeah that's what I would sense. say. Is, like if you look at the, the one ring being the epitome of sin. Like original sin, yeah, right? Yeah, that is the that's original the inherited sin. original sin, yep. yeah. Um, that he is, I mean, he inherits right. ultimately. Yeah. Um, and he comes upon, and then it's his burden to yeah to carry right um, through his life and into uh, Mount Doom. No, I I completely agree with you. I think yeah, that's the that's the pinnacle. I think that's the point. And it's so easy to talk about too with other movies when you talk about Christology. <laughs> It, it, it's you get hints of it, whereas with this book, you, you have it all in there. And even the reality of having like a company of people travel with him, you mm -hmm. see that with Christ. Um, a companion takes Samwise Gamgee, bearing it with Jesus. It's kind of like us with like the Matthew 11, you know? Uh, my yoke, take my yoke upon you and learn from yep. me. We're yoked with Christ. He bears the burden, but we go through the journey with him. So, and then in the end, really, anytime you talk about a book or a movie being Christological in nature, it also teaches you about the Christian life then. Everything about right. Christ then teaches us about how we live. And what's the ultimate uh, narrative of, of Lord of the Rings is a sacrificial living. And you get that in there. What does it mean to be a Christian is to live sacrificially as Christ does for us. Yeah. So it's very interesting with that. So, I mean, the books, you get a lot more of this. You know, yeah, the movie doesn't the movies don't necessarily. I mean, if, fully communicate. Yeah, that in in midst of trying to jam pack every third scene with a, a battle or. I mean, the first hundred and thirty yeah. pages of Fellowship of the Ring is them walking through four. So he's, I mean, he did that with the Hobbit, right? He made Hobbit. Yeah. Peter Jackson made the Hobbit into three movies. I mean, he could have done that. It would have been what like ten, twelve movies, probably. For sure, yeah. <laughs> if they actually <laughs> dove into everything, every single aspect that was of in it. There. But, and it's, so I guess the question is, why does it matter? Why, why does it matter if a movie has something we can get out of it that has Christ in it? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Well, I mean, ultimately, this kind of goes back to the, the conversation that we've had about music, is you're going to watch these things, you're going to see these things. Um, in my mind, certainly... Um, the writers of Superman or when Stan Lee and Jack Kirby were pinning the Avengers comics or, mm -hmm. or Thor or Spider-Man, et cetera, they weren't necessarily looking back and saying, I want Peter Parker to be a Christ-like figure. No. Um, they might have, um, especially with the advent of Superman, et cetera, in the 40s. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, these things aren't just there because we're seeing them. Right. Um, I think that's one of those things where the Christ narrative and the story of salvation is so built in to the the human psyche. Yeah. Um, and I think that, that kind of points to the truth of it, too. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't escape that. No. Um, no matter how persecuted uh, we might become in Christendom in 10 or 100 years... That's still going to prevail, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that's a lot of the power that seeing these stories and movies has. Certainly when um, 
when Superman's falling to the earth and he's in yeah and the the corpus pose that that's intentional yeah but at the same time I think the intention behind that for us is more important yeah if that makes sense oh no it does it makes perfect sense and that's the thing is it's what I like about it is God God works through everything Luther once once said God speaks on more than just pages, meaning in, Bi- in the Bible, yep. you see his word on in the trees, on leaves, and people, oh, well, that's like a pantheism, or pan- pantheism, panentheism, God is everything, or God is in everything, mm-hmm. these two, and that's not what Luther's saying, what he's saying is, God's working through all this stuff. Yep. He, he'll use anything to work to show you who he is yep. for you. And to point back to the cross. Yeah. Yep. Psalm 104, if anyone says you can't look at creation and, and meditate and know God, Read Psalm 104. It's a massive, it's all, It's like 50-something verses on the beauty of creation and everything in creation. Mm-hmm. And then it does this, so everything God gives, and then it does this one verse where it, it thanks God for making bread, wine, and oil. But the thing is, you don't, you don't find bread trees. You don't find wine bushes. You don't find oil uh, fields like that. Man has to do something to get these to things. Take it. So even these things, man working is God's mercy at work. So when you look at movies, it's like, hey, even in something like this, God can give me something. Mm -hmm. It may not define who Jesus is for me, but it may even reveal the nature of man. It may may teach me on what it means to be saved passively, Mm -hmm. not to do anything for my own salvation. And he'll work through these things. So take like a Spider-Man opening this weekend. Yep. Right? Um, this will air probably in a week or two, right? So, uh, no, this Saturday. This Saturday. So yeah, yep. it's actually timely. So there you go. So, so the just, thing is... <clears throat> as you speak right now, I hope you're coming back from, from seeing Spider-Man. But even take that, it's like, what? Well, yeah, oh, I hope so. I want to see it so bad. Um, well, I'll get paid tomorrow. Hey, I probably will go see there it. There you go. Hot dog, I'm going to go see it. Um, but the thing is, you, you look at this movie and... Yeah, it, it's you can see not just Christ-like figures, but even take the universality of depravity. These villains are coming from these other universes. Mm-hmm. Wickedness is not a subjective thing. Well, I think that's wicked. No, evil and wickedness is a universal thing. And you can learn this. It's like you can't rest from it then. Mm-hmm. So you can even learn that from a movie. So understanding who Christ is in movies and in, in poetry and novels and things like this It's also helpful just to see God at work to remind you of why you need Jesus as well. So it's fun times. So you can do with everything. But with the Spider-Man one, I'm excited to see that because, yeah, you have what I told the boys is interesting. You have all these other villains that fought someone else. And I I even said, this is a movie that could teach you about the office of the holy ministry. And the boys are like, what are you talking about? I said, well, you had Tobey Maguire, right? Okay. You had... A, uh, Andrew, Andrew Garfield. Andrew Garfield. And now you have Tom Holland. Okay. Three different Spider-Men. Okay. All wearing the same outfit. They are Spider-Man. Oh. You have villains that fought these other Spider-Men now fighting this one Spider-Man. And it doesn't matter who's in doesn't the club. It doesn't matter who's in the club. Spider-Man himself. It's the same with your pastor. That's why he wears the vestments. It doesn't matter who the man is. It matters what the office is. See, then I think, we, I think we've decided on our, our next episode. We're going to talk about I think we're going to start talking about Spider-Man because I want to talk about cancel culture and Spider-Man. There we go. That'll be the next episode that we're there going to we film go. soon and you'll get to listen to. All right. Thank you for joining us on this episode of There and Back Again. Uh, check us out next week here live on YouTube uh, at your streaming pleasure and also uh, over at higherthings.org. Uh, we're going into the new year. Check out our uh, 2022 conferences for you. Uh, we're going to be in Scranton, Pennsylvania, Valparaiso, Indiana, and on the campus of Montana State University in Bozeman. They have prime rib in their cafeteria. Oh, and I'm the plenary in Valpo. Yep. So really, there's no redeeming value about going to Valpo, I guess. You get me and no prime rib. Prime rib in Bozeman. We'll talk to you next time. Uh, Have a good week. Peace out.